What's up guys, my name is Fran and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be reviewing the not so new 2019 13 inch MacBook Pro. But more importantly, we're gonna be figuring out if this entry level MacBook is capable of editing 4K content. So this is a follow-up to my previous video entitled, Can You Edit 4K Video on a 13-inch MacBook Air? And in that video, we discovered at least using Final Cut Pro, it was totally possible. So this time around, we will be testing that exact same theory with an entry-level spec 13-inch MacBook Pro. So first, I wanted to take a look at the pricing difference between the 13-inch MacBook Pro and the 13-inch MacBook Air. Now, I know this isn't a direct versus video, but I felt like the pricing was pretty important because for about a delta of $200, you can get a very similarly spec 13-inch MacBook Pro. So so they're both gonna have eight gigabytes of RAM, both with a 128 gigabyte SSD, but with the MacBook Air sporting a dual core 1.6 gigahertz Intel processor and the 13 inch MacBook Pro featuring a quad core 1.4 gigahertz Intel i5 processor. So while it may not seem like it, this is a refresh to the entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro. This time around, it does come with a touch ID sensor, a touch bar, as well as an upgraded aforementioned quad core Intel i5 processor. But other than that, everything else is pretty much still the same. So the same crappy webcam, the same crappy speakers, the same low resolution 13 inch display, and the not so impressive dual Thunderbolt 3 ports. But this video isn't about the shortcomings of the entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro, but rather, is it capable of 4K video content creation? So now, let's get into that part of the video. Quite often, I feel like we use the term 4K video editing pretty loosely, and we don't really take into consideration the different types of 4K content that's out there. So first off, there's a bunch of different 4K codecs. So there's the very popular H.264 and H.265, and then you can start getting into some of the raw formats. So you have Cinema DNG, ProRes RAW, Blackmagic RAW, Red Code RAW, etc., etc. And then there's all different types of chroma subsampling. So you can record in 444, 422, 420, and that can also affect your bit rate. So on average for 4K, you're gonna see something around 60 megabits per second, all the way up to about 1.5 gigabits per second, depending on the type of camera you're recording with. So with all that being said, in today's video experiment, we're gonna be focusing on more basic files. So simple 420 chroma subsampling recorded at about 100 megabits per second. Basically files have been generated off of my Sony a6600. By the way, I plan on doing a video review on this perfect YouTube camera, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that. So how does a 13 inch MacBook Pro perform with these files? Let's find out. Due to the capacity constraints of the internal 128 gigabyte SSD, I ran all of these experiments off of a one terabyte Samsung T5 SSD. Also, the operating system was Catalina 10.15.2. Kicking off our testing is Apple's Final Cut Pro. Now, when scrubbing through our timeline using non-proxy media with and without effects after preliminary rendering, we saw absolutely no issues scrubbing through our super smooth 4K timeline. And while I wasn't able to benchmark it visually, I can say I did not witness any drop frames, and I would definitely say it's possible to scrub through a 4K timeline using the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And next was our render test. Now here we saw some pretty decent performance as well. I built out a small project with a couple of uh, transitions and titles and uh, it was about one minute and 15 seconds and I exported it to H.264 video format which is best for uh, content creation platforms like YouTube. Now we'll leave the numbers up here on the screen but as you guys can probably see it didn't do too bad when it comes to rendering in Final Cut Pro. Now of course Final Cut Pro wasn't the only editing application that I ran this through. I also took some time to run it through DaVinci Resolve as well as Adobe Premiere Pro. So in DaVinci Resolve, we saw a pretty similar performance to Final Cut Pro. I was able to scrub through my timeline and playback did not drop any frames. Also rendering files out to H.264 gave me some pretty decent results. In fact, they were actually faster than the ones I saw in Final Cut Pro, rendering at around 30 seconds. So switching gears over to Adobe Premiere Pro, this is actually where we started to see a bottleneck with the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So when doing a simple edit, such as adding clips to a timeline and just simply cutting them up, we saw a pretty decent performance. I was able to scrub through the timeline as well as playback video smoothly. But as soon as you started to add effects, color grades, and even transitions, this is where Adobe Premiere Pro started to chug as if it was running on a computer from 1998. I also ran into a bunch of issues when using Adobe Media Encoder. Basically, the application would crash every time I tried to render a video. I also ran a couple of other benchmarks for video conversion. So I took a ProRes RAW file and converted it over to H.264, and I ran it through Compressor as well as Handbrake, 
and I'll leave the results up here on the screen. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a Franklin Reed video if we didn't get a little bit of eGPU action going. So of course, I paired up my 13-inch MacBook Pro with my Sonnet eGPU breakaway box. Now, inside of that box, I paired that up with my Gigabyte RX 5700 XT. So while pairing up my 13-inch MacBook Pro with an external RX 5700 XT did make an impact in performance, it wasn't always a consistent result. I'll throw the numbers up here on the screen, but as you guys can see, while it did make an impact in certain applications, other applications seemed to be unfazed or didn't take advantage of that eGPU. And with the price tag of that eGPU setup coming in at around six to $700, you're probably better off investing that money into a more powerful 15-inch MacBook Pro. So what is the verdict? Is the entry-level 13-inch MacBook Pro at its $1,299 price tag a 4K editing machine? Well, the short answer is yes, but it depends on what application you plan on using. So if you're a Final Cut editor or looking to get into DaVinci Resolve, of course, the 13-inch MacBook Pro is plenty capable. But if Adobe Premiere Pro is your thing, you're probably better off looking at something else or getting a more powerful MacBook Pro. But that is going to wrap it up for me in this video. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Also, while you guys are down there, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if it's your first time to the channel, consider subscribing. Once again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks for checking out this video. I'll see you guys in my next one.